the first thing is the people. Obviously, this business is about the connections you make um, and the, the people you trust. And the most important people that I trust in this industry are at this company. The new beginning. Um, other companies have are doing things the same way they've always done them. And so having a new opportunity to do things a different way is what really intrigued me. Um, I'd say from a sales perspective, what I love most is that we have really the best of both worlds. So we're a big multi-billion dollar international company with great financials. Um, but on the other side, we also feel very much like the small little family run company. I like the safety of First American, um, but they've got a, a human side to them. You know, a little softer, gentler approach. And uh, I really appreciate that. Um, and they've really given me a great opportunity to go out and try and build something for them. In Colorado, guess what? We're all local. There's four local underwriters, and together, the other day, we have in almost 125 years of local underwriting experience in Colorado. And I tell that to people all the time, and that's really the big difference. We can make local decisions quickly to get that deal to the closing table. That's the big difference. We're, we're a team, and, and we support each other and look out for each other, and it really promotes more business for us. First American is all about a work-life balance and the, the leadership is incredible because they truly care about the customers that or the, the associates that work here. This is our customer service department and the marketing support services that are just completely robust. Uh, marketing is a challenge for a lot of real estate brokers. It's something they have to do but it takes a lot of time. It can be expensive and we have a fulfillment solution that is far and away better than anything else that our competitors have to offer. The leadership is very down to earth and they move very quickly. So anytime I've needed something or had to support a customer or had to make a decision that maybe cost the company money or whatever, uh, they're very quick to make a decision on that stuff. You're working with people who have been in this market, in the Colorado market, for 30 plus years. At one point, um, First American was underwriting almost 70% of all transactions in Colorado, and some of those very people were working on those files. I really believe our people are passionate about our company and, um, and do it better. What if there was no car legal hotline? Just one call to a lawyer would cost you at least $250 per hour. What if you only had unreliable or hard to understand industry reports to include in your business plans and share with your consumers? What if there was not an organized association to fight for your right to conduct business in a fair and equitable manner and to protect consumers' private property rights? What if car never changes with the times to meet our members' needs. You don't have to ask what if anymore because over the last 18 months, CAR expanded the legal hotline two more hours a week to help answer your legal questions. CAR created a research program that provides Colorado Realtors with accurate and reliable quarterly housing market reports. CAR successfully advocates on Capitol Hill each year on behalf of all Colorado Realtors and private property owners so you can focus on your business. CAR created a professional development program that focuses on timely and relevant real estate issues through our live webcast program. CAR established relationships with many real estate related companies to give you member discounts on things you actually use and need to be successful. CAR produced phenomenal networking and professional development opportunities in 2013 through its meetings and events. CAR's quest to make your state association better, stronger, more relevant, and able to withstand future challenges of the real estate industry is a never-ending journey. 
We have successfully put many solid processes, programs, and services in place. Now it's time to take the next steps of our journey by adding more value to your membership. Our vision is to create more opportunities for Colorado Realtors to lower their risk by expanding the hours of the Car Legal Hotline. Provide more reliable industry and consumer data to make you more confident and productive in the sales process. Produce even more live webcasts. You can apply to your ever-changing business and help you remain on top of your game. Build a deeper political war chest to help preserve the industry and protect your consumers' rights. Increase our outreach to our local Realtor associations, MLSs, and members. Take advantage of your car benefits and features. Visit coloradorealtors.com for details. The first thing is the people. Obviously, this business is about the connections you make um, and the, the people you trust. And the most important people that I trust in this industry are at this company. The new beginning. Um, other companies have are doing things the same way they've always done them. And so having a new opportunity to do things a different way is what really intrigued me. Um, I'd say from a sales perspective, what I love most is that we have really the best of both worlds. So we're a big multi-billion dollar international company with great financials. Um, but on the other side, we also feel very much like the small little family run company. I like the safety of First American, um, but they've got a, a human side to them. You know, a little softer, gentler approach. And uh, I really appreciate that. Um, and they've really given me a great opportunity to go out and try and build something for them. In Colorado, guess what? We're all local. There's four local underwriters, and together, the other day, we have in almost 125 years of local underwriting experience in Colorado. And I tell that to people all the time, and that's really the big difference. We can make local decisions quickly to get that deal to the closing table. That's the big difference. We're, we're a team, and, and we support each other and look out for each other, and it really promotes more business for us. First American is all about a work-life balance and the, the leadership is incredible because they truly care about the customers that or the, the associates that work here. This is our customer service department and the marketing support services that are just completely robust. Uh, marketing is a challenge for a lot of real estate brokers. It's something they have to do but it takes a lot of time. It can be expensive and we have a fulfillment solution that is far and away better than anything else that our competitors have to offer. The leadership is very down to earth and they move very quickly. So anytime I've needed something or had to support a customer or had to make a decision that maybe cost the company money or whatever, uh, they're very quick to make a decision on that stuff. You're working with people who have been in this market, in the Colorado market, for 30 plus years. At one point, um, First American was underwriting almost 70% of all transactions in Colorado, and some of those very people were working on those files. I really believe our people are passionate about our company and, um, and do it better. Good morning, I'm Julie Woodfin, Professional Development Coordinator, and I wanted to thank you for joining us today. We are privileged to have with us Peter Russin from the Colorado Energy Office. He will be discussing how your clients can take advantage of the Colorado Energy Savings Mortgage Incentive, along with current Colorado market trends in energy efficiency and renewable energy. But first, I wanted to pass along a quick thank you to First American Title for presenting our webcast program which of course, as you know, is part of our professional development initiative here at CAR. A representative from First American is with us today
to tell us about some of the services they have to offer. Ben? Hello, I hope you're having a fabulous day. My name's Ben Gauss. I'm an account manager with First American Title. I want to talk to you briefly about how First American can help you in your business. Let me first start off with a question. Have you ever had a transaction that had messy title work? Perhaps a transaction was being prolonged because of something in the title that just couldn't be figured out? Your commission and the client's future was dependent on either purchasing or selling that home. Well, that's where we want to help you. We have experienced, knowledgeable underwriters right here in Colorado that can help solve these complicated title issues, whether the title policy is with First American or not. Again, whether we have anything to do with the title policy or not, we want to help you find the answer to your title questions. So the next time you have one of those tough transactions, shoot me an email or give me a call and we'll be happy to help you. I hope you enjoy your course and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you again so much to First American for their ongoing support. Now before we get started with the program, I have just a few housekeeping items. We've allocated an hour and a half for today's presentation with a short break scheduled at around 10 a.m. If you have any questions along the way, please feel free to type those in according to the instructions there on your screen. And finally, a link to today's PowerPoint can be accessed in the area below the video stream you're watching right now. If you have any questions or problems accessing that PowerPoint, please just send a note to the email address in front of you there on your screen. Our moderator this morning, who will also introduce our guest, is Wes Parham, Director of Business Services and Professional Development here at CAR. At this time, I'd like to turn the program over to him. Wes? Thanks, Julie. Uh, good morning, and, and thank you all again for joining us. Our guest this morning, as Julie mentioned, is Peter Russin with the Colorado Energy Office. Peter is going to spend some time this morning reviewing some recent energy efficiency market trends and update us on some studies conducted through the Energy Office. He'll also discuss some state incentive programs available for homeowners. And as a reminder, a link to the PowerPoint he'll be using can be accessed in a link there underneath your video screen. So with that, I'm pleased to introduce Peter Russin. Peter oversees residential programs for the Energy Office, where he works on a variety of programs to increase efficiency and renewable energy throughout the home buying process. And he's also worked with our MLS is across the state on the implementation of related data entry fields. He holds a master's degree in both urban and regional planning as well as public administration from the University of Colorado. I myself know Peter to have a passion for his work and involvement among the real estate community, which brings him here today. So at this time, Peter, why don't I turn the program over to you to catch us up to speed on what's happening at the Energy Office. Thank you, Wes. Thanks, Peter. Right. And thank you everybody for tuning in and watching this live presentation here today. Very excited to be here at the Colorado um, Association of Realtors and uh, presenting on our market trends that are going on in 2013 to 2014. Uh, today you'll be uh, hearing a variety of information but before we get into that I do have to go into our mission statement and department vision and how it ties into our current real estate um, market. So first thing to talk about is um, our mission statement. The CEO's mission is to improve the effective use of Colorado's energy resources and the efficient consumption of energy in all economic sectors through providing technical guidance, financial support, program advocacy, and public communications. That is a mouthful and it's a lot of um, words up there, but really what that means in terms of real estate and how does it really relate back to you is basically the program I work in, on is to provide the ability of all Coloradoans to live in a high performing home. So that's from developing uh, with partners such as CAR and other MLS boards around the states, the green MLS fields that we have seen implemented, um, to working with appraisers, to seeing if there's value from doing improvements such as adding insulation or adding PV solar to a home, all the way to financial support, and that's the Colorado Mortgage Incentive that we're going to be talking about at the end of the presentation. Uh, the department vision is, is also it, up on the screen that you'll see or on the PowerPoint. Um, but again, it always comes back to energy efficiency, um, energy efficient homes are going to be more uh, economic beneficial for Coloradoans as well as healthier to live in. We're talking about not just better indoor air quality, but potentially less radon um, and low utility bills. So we're really putting in a whole home approach to Coloradoans and living a more prosperous and healthy life. 
So today, as we move forward, um, the presentation is going to cover two topics. The first one is current trends in the Colorado real estate market, and the second part will cover the Colorado Energy Saving Mortgage Incentive, and really how your buyers can take advantage of this incentive. And it is pretty much um, our main piece of legislation that was passed last year in terms of real estate uh, from the Colorado Energy's office perspective. And really what I hope you take away from the presentation is a basic understanding of how to leverage the Colorado Saving Mortgage Incentive, um, or if you have questions, where to get more information. And then um, understanding current energy efficiency and renewable energy trends in the Colorado real estate market. Um, what's going on? What do you need to know? What we're really looking at is providing you with information to give to your clients. You don't need to do anything but provide information. So before we get too deep into the efficiency trends, the first thing that we need to know is the HERS rating and HERS index. Uh, this is a foundational piece of information um, that spreads across for both your home sellers and home buyers. The best way to think about this is a miles per gallon for a home. Uh, similar to that, uh, miles per gallons are, are uh, the higher that you go, um, the more efficient your car is. This is a little bit opposite, so you want to think golf. The lower that you go, uh, the, the more efficient your house is. So on the screen, basically right here, you have a home that scores 65. Um, that means it's 45%, almost 40, 35%, excuse me, more efficient than a home that scores 100 on the scale. That's a home that's built to the 2006 uh, energy code. And then one point you go down uh, is one point more efficient. Uh, so as you get to the green down there, that's where you can get really efficient homes. Once you get past 40, that's what we're talking about, having solar PV on your roof um, or other items to really produce as much on site as you consume over the year. And the last bullet point that you see on here is approved by the mortgage industry. And with that, you're going to see the, um, every single piece of uh, HUD-1 documentation or from Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, any of their programs will have to contain a HERS rating um, as that energy score to provide any sort of benefit to your, to your uh, home buyer. So what we want to look at is, well, that's the HERS index. What is, what, how does this provide me reference in, in my daily life? What, does, what do I need to be looking at? Well, on the scale you see here, we're going to talk about some different trends. Just to know, most existing homes in the Denver area are about 130 on the scale, so 30% less efficient than a home uh, built to the 2006 Energy Code. And then we have some homes, when we start getting in some of the older neighborhoods that we're looking at, uh, down in some of the old areas of Pueblo or maybe in Telluride, we're scoring about 150 to 170. Um, but the good news is, on our new home side, we're really doing some great um, or we've made great progress over the last six or seven years in Colorado. In 2009, 33% of all new homes were rated uh, by the Energy Star program, which means they scored about 85 on the HERS index scale. So that's about 15% more efficient than a home built to 2006. So again, three years, we're doing really well. We've improved 15%. Well, then 2010, 2011, we've improved that to 45% of all new homes were receiving that designation. So again, we are doing better. The really interesting news that we had coming up was in the last two quarters of 2012, 60% of all homes were receiving a HERS rating. So if you were going to a, a, a new home builder, chances are that they were getting a, a HERS rating on the home, and they're averaging 63. Well, that number has now since dropped at the end of 2013 to 59. So now we have homes that are 41 more percent more efficient than homes built to the 2006 Energy Code. So you think in seven years we've improved the efficiency of homes by 41%. It is really amazing what is going on in the market. Colorado has a ton of great builders that are putting great products out there on the market in every part of, of Colorado. And so with that, um, last year the state legislator asked, what can we do to help accelerate this market? So the Colorado Energy Office worked with our, our builder partners and, and other appraisers and industry stakeholders and said, let's set the target at 50. If you can get to 50, we'll provide you an incentive. Um, to, to, to buy that home. And the nice thing about that is we're going to keep on pulling down the market and it provides the buyer an incentive so they can go pick out something like a granite countertop or wood floors. They can pick out an energy package and puts it on the, the home buyer to select those improvements. So what I talked about before is that what happens if we want to get down lower on the score, if we want to get into those green areas and below 40, solar really becomes a very important part of the overall package. So that's why the Colorado Energy Office has taken a look at solar and solar power. And one of the biggest changes that we have seen in Colorado is solar leasing. It has increased quite a bit in Colorado. 
In fact, in 2013, 85% of all residential systems were le leased systems. Um, essentially what it does, it allows a homeowner to pro buy a system with zero money down um, or lease a system, and then they are essentially saving 20% off their energy bills starting from day one. Um, the third party ownership, it really allows a lot of different uh, incentives to be used from a business perspective as a homeowner that we can't take, um, but a business can take depreciation, which really changes the economic um, paybacks of solar. So that's why they're able to offer these leases for, for zero or to little money down. Uh, one great example is Oakwood Homes. Uh, they had their carriage house development in Green Valley Ranch. It's standard option for PV solar. It's been on there for a few years. Well, this last year, they changed it from uh, an own homeowner option to a leasing option with their solar installer partner. And leasing has increased on the selection options from 5% to 80% of all homes in that development in less than one year. And we're not talking about million dollar homes or $750,000 homes. We're talking homes that are selling from the high 100s to 300,000. That's really our, our move up buyer, maybe some of our first time home buyers are now able to afford solar. So again, as we look at that HERS index that we just talked about, in order to get down there, we need to have solar onto these homes. Well, we have this great marketing tool, this great change in the market to make that happen. Uh, the other fact that we're looking at in solar is, okay, we have these tools in the market that can really help us uh, get PV panels on homes, but what does that mean for the homeowner? We really want to take a look, if we want people to, to add solar onto their homes, there should be some sort of benefit to that. So we wanted to study the value of that. The Colorado Energy Office worked with the Appraisal Institute Colorado Chapter and the Colorado Coalition of Appraisers to develop a PV solar study. Uh, what is really nice about this partnership that we formed, uh, similar to how we formed it with CAR, uh, is that we aren't the experts in the market. When we work with the Greenfields, we weren't the experts on how to list properties. Same thing with appraising. We aren't the experts on how to develop uh, appraisal studies or to understand the marketing impact. Of, of PV solar. So we work with them, we developed an agreement, and appraisers um, not only just selected the data, but they also selected the appraiser to study it and peer reviewed it. They looked at 30 homes sold in the Northwest Denver metro area, ranging from 200,000, so again, where we were just talking in that Green Valley Ranch, all the way up to 680,000. So a little bit on the higher end of the market, but again, there might be some move up buyers in that, in that area. A little bit different, um, we didn't mix systems. We only looked at own systems, not lease systems. Uh, it's a little bit different on, the, on how you appraise the two. Uh, so that's why we focused on the, the own systems. Uh, and again, the study's been peer reviewed by professional appraisers um, and it's gaining uh, traction it within, their, within their profession. And of the 30 homes that were studied, 21 sold for higher because of the PV systems and none sold for less. This is huge because for the first two years I was working at the energy office, we always heard that I can't sell a home that has PV solar on it because it's ugly and nobody wants it. Well, we hired appraisers and they're using their methods and they, their peer review and their, their data and they're able to find that actually PV does have a positive impact on home sales. Uh, the average range of value was $1.45 per watt to $2.57 a watt. And when you're thinking that solar costs maybe three to 350 a watt, all of a sudden you're looking at maybe a third to 50 percent uh, return on your investment and we're looking at bathroom remodels or other things in the in the industry um, that you're getting maybe not your full payback but you're getting something for it and that's what we're really looking for uh, so not only will you have lower utility bills but you're also having an economic value when you're going to sell your home um, the study also included a detailed look at how appraisers uh, can study pv or how can they study the impact uh, when they're providing value when doing an appraisal What's nice about this is that it's just not a static study. We're actually helping to train appraisers on how to study this information. What happens if there's one home in um, Park County and there's nothing around it? Well, how can they show value for that or for that PV solar? Well, here's how we were able to do that. Here's how your peer in Denver was able to do this. And you can take this with you. And it sort of completes the picture of us, what we look around as, uh, providing people the ability to move into high-performing houses. That's sort of our mission. Well, if people have a value for that, um, they might want to add that as an option. So again, it's sort of closing that loop on being able to provide people that, that pathway is because now there's a, there's a value that comes with adding that benefit. Uh, as we move forward, um, you know, we're talking a lot about renewable energy. Well, we also want to talk about energy and energy efficiency. And three years ago, or I guess maybe it's now four years, 2010, time does fly, 
we started working on the Green MLS Initiative with realtors and uh, the MLS boards around the state, and we started our training. And so what this slide just reflects is our different training that we've done uh, around the state. And while we're working on a study right now with the Colorado Coalition of Appraisers and the Colorado Appraisal Institute on energy efficiency and its impact, I don't have a study that I can point to you today uh, that says in Colorado we have we have an impact on energy efficiency like we do for renewable energy and PV systems. Um, however, by looking at the broker's remarks, this is what you're typing into the your MLS data sheet and putting on the listing. Um, what we're looking at right now is MetroList and IRIS data uh, from 2010 to 2013. And if you look where we start our intensive process, you can start to see some movement on the bar on the pipe. Uh, excuse me, sorry, on the line graph. Uh, the top line that you're looking at is granite countertops, uh, and that started at about 13% and is now 24% of all homes. So now when we go into homes, we just say granite countertops, it's a feature that people want, similar to a three-car three garage or double-pane windows. It's a feature that people want and that has value. If you look at the red line, that is the name of energy, or that's the word energy that's being searched or put into those listings on just new homes. We broke out new and existing homes. Uh, we start around 3%, 4%, and then in 2013 we climbed to 13% in, 20, or in 2012. In 2013, I only have the IRIS data right now, not don't have MetroList yet, um, but we are at 15%, so another bump. At 15% of all new homes have some sort of energy or energy efficiency in their broker's remarks. So brokers are showing that they're listing these properties and that potentially the market is demanding that. So if you can see the curve there, we're right about where granite countertops were in 2008. So if we continue this upward trend and get to 25% of all new homes being marketed with energy or energy efficiency features, then we know that market has transformed. The second part that we're gonna look at is that blue line, and that's existing homes. And while there's been movement, I can take solace in the fact that we went from 1% to 2%. That's a 50% jump, that's great. Uh, you can kind of mess around with numbers. In all reality, it's not great. Um, and even in 2011, um, we had a small uptick, 2012 a little bit more, 2013 we sort of leveled off, again only iris data, but we're, we're basically still at 2%. And so while we're hoping for a trickle down over time, right now we're not seeing that in, in what the brokers are, or what uh, you realtors are putting into your MLS listings. But that's okay, uh, it's still good data to use and it's a good baseline. And some of you out there might be wondering, well, what about my area? Obviously, we know uh, realtors are in every part of the state um, through all the different boards. Um, while this is just MetroList and IRIS, this year we did take a look at uh, Colorado Springs, uh, Gunnison, that'd be uh, Gunnison County Board of Realtors, uh, San Miguel Board of Realtors, and then also Tallyride, uh, or excuse me, Durango La Plata County. So we're getting that information out there to start tracking the impact of real estate trainings. But this is just showing that we're making some strides especially in the new homes market. Uh, one other way that we're looking at this is, is are these small changes. Um, well, how is this showing up? How is this, we're, we're looking at energy, but, but what does that mean inside a real estate listing or in your broker's remarks? So this is what we, we have found. Um, this isn't an idea that I came up with. It's actually Melissa Baldridge from eGreen Contractors. Uh, they're here in Denver. They, they started to notice this trend and then once they told me about it, we still started looking at around the state. So it's really called form, function, and performance. Form, you know, this is typically how we sold um, homes in the past. Hardwoods in the living area, stainless steel appliances, granite in the kitchen. What's the function of the house? How many square feet are, do we have? Number of bedrooms? Does it have a three car garage? Um, is there a finished basement? So form and function is typically how we, we usually have sold homes in, in real estate. Well, what we started to notice is performance is becoming very important. How much energy or water does this property use? Is it close to amenities? How about the walk score? How many of you have been looking at your listings and being adding a walk score? I know it's almost a, uh, not necessarily a mandatory field, but it always pops up in MetroList when I'm searching for homes myself. Um, does it have a healthy indoor air quality? Talking about low in, uh, uh, radon scores, things like that. So looking at this listing, this is actually a $670,000 house in Castle Rock, Colorado. Again, it's quite expensive, but you can see how, it's, how it starts to play out. You have your function, and that's just sort of your standard that you see in the real estate listen, listings. Um, you have your form uh, there in the yellow, and then you also have some of your uh, performance in there. So as you're taking a look at this listing, have you used this before? Have you incorporated this? 
Uh, so it's a little bit different take on, on what, what features are in a home. And again, so this is in Castle Rock. Well, let's pull up another one, similar thing, form, function, performance. So in this one, we're looking at, uh, this is actually in Durango. Again, it's the other part of the state this is spreading. Uh, it says energy efficient home. What about the form um, and the function? You can see that all listed there. Uh, it's close to, close to places to eat. It's very much um, adding that performance is, is what people are going to. Uh, I will say though, again, this is a $600,000 house. We, ought to, we get a lot of questions on that. It, that is a market that is developing and we sort of see that trickle down. And this is why I have hope on that trickle down theory is on this slide that we're looking at right now. Here's a $160,000 house in, in the Denver area. Um, it might not have all the quite features. I mean, you can see the amount that I've highlighted is a lot less in, than in those other um, examples that were just shown. But again, we still have the performance um, of the insulation. We have the form and the function. Those typical features keep on coming back up in these, in these real estate listings. And this is a home that is pretty much, at, at this point, one of your first time home buyers will be able to afford, afford this house. And this is what, what we're seeing as, as being listed as marketing. And then just to kind of prove my point, and maybe it's too much, I don't know if I maybe could have cut a slide, but I just want to say here's in Crested Butte um, outside of Gunnison. Again, performance, function, and form. Um, I, this one, again, the house is a little bit uh, on the higher end, about half a million dollars, but um, this isn't something unique to Boulder or to some different communities that we kind of associate um, more energy efficiency to or green. Energy efficiency isn't, uh, it isn't just for green people or non-green people. It's for anybody that wants to save money, essentially. And that's the neat thing about energy efficiency is that you're going to be saving money and putting kids into healthier homes. And if that doesn't sell real estate, I don't know what will. So as we, as we start to see this over time, um, hopefully we continue to, to, as we go into next year and we look at the Gunnison MLS and see how people are changing, hopefully see their, their curve go up like we have seen in Metrolist and Iris territory. So the one question that we did have is this is what's going on, but how do we accelerate this change? Uh, how do we continue to have more and more high efficiency homes come onto the market and people want them? But two, how do we also create a safety net, so to speak, for existing homes? We know that we're talking about a lot of brand new construction and we're really talking about homes that um, are only maybe five to 10% of the market and maybe less than 5% in, in many markets in the mountain communities. So for 90% of the homes that you're selling, um, how do we make them more energy efficient? How do we make sure that as the market moves forward that these existing homes aren't left be behind? Well, this last year, um, again, we worked with the state legislature and our builder and realtor partners, and we worked on the Colorado Energy Saving Mortgage Incentive. It was a bill passed by the state legislature, and what it basically said is that the Colorado Energy Office can partner with any bank in Colorado to offer a tiered incentive based on the HERS index scale. So again, going back to that HERS index scale, and um, as that's a foundational piece of the mortgage industry, that's why we had to go over it. Um, it works with any mortgage product, including the Energy Efficient Mortgage Products, or EEMs, which you may have heard about. If you've heard about them about four or five years ago um, and you didn't like them, don't worry about it. FHA and VA have totally, totally changed the program, have made them very easy to work with. And within that, um, this incentive is designed uh, for point of purchase retrofits. The good news is max credit for a net zero home or near net zero is $8,000 and $6,000 for an existing home. So if you go back to 2008, 2009, when we were at the bottom of our uh, housing market, um, maybe a little bit different in other places, but nationally the federal government had the $8,000 first time home buyer tax credit that really tried to help spur some different investment. Um, that's where they got these numbers. That's why that $8,000 is there. Hopefully that's a number that people can latch onto and say, if I buy a net zero home, I'm getting $8,000. Instead of a form of a tax credit, it's coming in on the HUD-1. Um, to qualify, a new home has, has to have a HERS rating below 50, and then existing homes also have to have a HERS rating and prioritize air sealing, insulation, uh, and heating equipment if it's less than an 80% efficient furnace before moving on to other items such as adding solar. So with that, um, let's take a look as far as how this really, um, how this works in, in principle. Um, we're going to take a look at two tracks, the new homes track and the existing homes track. They're a little bit different, but we want to take a look at them um, and, and do a couple examples of how they work. So basically, how does the new program work? Um, there's a few basic steps that are involved in it. Uh, first, your client uh, finds a builder or a home 
um, maybe it's already kind of under construction right now, and they talk to the builder about, about the program. And this is where you can kind of be an advocate as well for your client and say, hey, here's this information. We do have some information sheets that we can print up for you um, at this energy office, if you would like. Um, and then they pick a target HERS index score or range. Um, or if it's, it's already being built, some options to add energy package on. Maybe it's adding a little bit of insulation. Or maybe it's adding the PV solar that we've been talking about. The third step is to have the lender reserve the incentive amount based on the estimated HERS index score. Um, with this, it's really the lender just writing me an email and saying this is the property, this is the target score, and this is the incentive that, that we want to reserve um, and, and tier. And I'll get to the tiers in the next slide. Um, step four, the builder provides the final HERS rating before closing. Uh, they send it in to me, I take a look at it, make sure everything matches up, and then uh, the lender will invoice the CEO after closing for the state portion of the incentive. So that's the other piece that we're going to go over because it is a, a state uh, matching incentive, um, and that's what we're going to look at at this next slide. So the tiered incentive rate. Um, this is really good to understand that not everybody gets $8,000. It is a way to market that if you get a HERS index below 10 on our new homes that you can receive an $8,000 benefit or near net zero. Um, but the incentive starts at 50 to 40. So remember that first slide or the second slide we went over, most homes in Colorado score are averaging 59 on the scale. Well, if they improve nine points or 9%, they're gonna get a $1,000 benefit, half from us, half from the lender or, or builder. Uh, 39 to 25, a $2,500 benefit, and, and so on. And the one thing as they, as they get down to net zero, that there is an investment required by the builder to put that on there, and there will obviously be an increase in price, but that's where the $8,000 benefit comes into play, is that helps to buy down that, that payment for them, or that extra cost, added cost in the mortgage. Um, the second part of this is state versus non-state contribution. So I said it was matching. Well, wh what does that mean? Um, so for the first three tiers, this incentive is split ev evenly between the state and non-state sources for the first three tiers. Um, non-state sources, that can be a lender, a realtor, um, or a utility uh, incentives, or a builder. Typically we're seeing a lot of builders be the partner on this. Um, and what we do have in there is also a limiter. The state will cover any non-state portion greater than 0.75% of the mortgage balance for the first three tiers. And what does that mean? That's sort of really kind of vague, and if you haven't been working a lot, what, what does that, in, in mortgage, what does that really mean? So let's just take a look at, say, a home that scored 20 on the HERS index scale. Um, they scored 20, and uh, they maybe sold their other house, so all they have to have is a home that is, um, their mortgage balance is only $100,000. Within that, um, we're not going to make the bank or lender um, match us 1500 to 1500 in that with the limiter, the non-state contributor in most cases, like I said, is going to be actually the, the builder, is going to provide $750 at closing um, and the energy office is going to provide $2,250 to make that full $3,000 tier um, and make that whole. So again, there's a state and versus non-state um, matching contribution. Your client gets all the money in the end, it's just that we leverage a few different resources. For the $8,000 benefit, the non-state source is 0.6% of the mortgage balance. So we dropped it a little bit because we're getting into some really big numbers at $8,000. I mean, that if they had a home and a mortgage of only 20000 but was net zero, they would get $8,000. So there's no way that a lender or a builder is going to cover $4,000 on that type of mortgage. So in that case, let's look at a $200,000. let us be a little bit more realistic. Let's look at a $200,000 uh, mortgage amount. Not home value, but mortgage amount. Um, in that tier, the Colorado Energy Office would be providing $6,800 at closing, and then the um, lender or builder partner would provide $1,200. Again, those two add up to that $8,000 hole. I just want to kind of go over a little bit uh, of an, more of an example of that for you, um, just so you guys get kind of a, a, a good understanding. I know we'll have some questions at the end, I'm, I'm here to answer them, but just to sort of, I've, I've seen this come up a few times, so I just want to make sure that we, we cover it. So that home that's near net zero, we're just going to put an eight. This is actually a home that came through the program, by the way. Um, it scored eight on the HERS index scale. Uh, the lender reserved the incentive for the borrower with the builder paying the non-state portion. Again, on new homes, we're going to have a lot of builders paying the, the non-state uh, portion. Home sale price doesn't matter, only mortgage amount. Just want to reiterate that. It doesn't matter if you have a $500,000 home and you're, and you're only having a $200,000 mortgage. They're still getting that $8,000 benefit and we're working out the tiers below that so that way we're covering most of it. 
So in this case, the mortgage amount was, uh, the home was actually a half a million dollar home. The mortgage amount was only $390,000 and some change. And so basically how the calculation really goes, this is on the lender side, maybe it's a little bit too into the weeds, but just so you understand how it works. Um, the mortgage amount times 0.6%, which is about 2,300. The state portion is obviously that 8,000 minus that, that 2,300. So what we're providing is the $5,656.10. Uh, the total incentive shows up on the HUD-1 for the home buyer, um, and so nothing changes for them. It's really easy. I mean, it's that easy. It just shows up there. Uh, they can use it for down pay, uh, excuse me. Some banks have been able to use it for down payment assistance. Um, others have been able to use it for interest rate buy-down, principal reduction, closing costs. Some people have been able to escrow it to do additional improvements to the house. It really is up to the lender to figure out um, what's legal and not and not legal to use it. I know January 10th there was a ton of new mortgage rules that came out. Uh, it was really hard to actually develop a program uh, passed into law in 2013 when new mortgage rules came out in 2014. Uh, so we're, we're working with lenders on that but it's really up to their compliance department to make sure it works. Um, if you provide the information to your to your buyer and they provide it to the lender, I'll work with the lender. The Colorado Energy Office is not a regulatory agency Everything that we've done in the past has been voluntary and best practices. You know, even going back to the green MLS, we didn't mandate green fields. We went around and we worked with every uh, MLS around the state to see if they wanted to add it and provided some help to, for them to add it, our training uh, to use it. It's all voluntar voluntary and volunteer-based uh, initiatives that we work on. So same thing here. Uh, it's up to the lender to choose to participate in the program. They don't sign a contract. But if they do, I will walk them through how to do this and how, we, how the money shows up on the HUD-1. Um, for your client. So I'm looking at it, um, just so you have a visual, I mean, I know everybody's probably seen a HUD-1. This is where it shows up. Um, basically, we look at lines 206 and 207 on the HUD-1. Um, you can see seller paid closing costs includes that portion, that 2300. Uh, so that is why a lot of builders, builders are in most cases already paying closing costs, so it's very easy that, for them to match this since they're just taking it from, from one other source. And the energy saving mortgage portion, you see that, and that's sort of the calculation that, that we just had. So again, it's very easy to see on the HUD-1 and, and work with it. So the question I had, that's great. Um, but what about builders in my area? This, is this work statewide? Is it only certain areas? Um, the nice thing is that I have found builders in every part of the state that can not only build below 50, but even offer net zero energy packages. And we're talking Grand Junction, Pueblo, Colorado Springs, Denver, Fort Collins, Eagle County, um, Pagosa Springs, Durango. I can continue to name off the, the places, but we have builders, at least 21 builders in the state that can offer a net zero package from um, production builders to maybe some custom builders, but they're in your area. And so that's a nice thing. On the following slides, what, what I'd like you guys to note is that, that the slides show the average HERS rating from three different areas. Um, the cooler the color, the more efficient the average is. And then some communities have actually already uh, below the threshold for 50. So if you look at the map, and I'll kind of point out a few communities, if you have home buyers that are looking at new homes in these areas, they probably can just take advantage of this without adding anything to the real estate deal, just receiving the incentive. So on this one, let's take a look at the Denver metro area. Um, you can see we sort of have the C470 loop and where people are building. Uh, Boulder County, we definitely have some builders in there that are building uh, below 50. You can see that, that darker darker color. And as we move down into Denver, um, you can see Stapleton out there um, kind of on the edge. And then also down south of that, almost directly south, is Parker. Uh, we have a lot of great builders in Parker that are building um, you know, below 50. Uh, and this is their average. So you know some people are actually probably building closer to zero and some people might be closer to 65. But you definitely have some builders in there that are, that are putting out a product that would meet the the guidelines without having to do much work or adding any additional um, improvements to the house. The one neat thing uh, on this slide is if you look just north of Denver and unincorporated Adams County, 64th and Pecos, there's a great development there. It's an area that you wouldn't think would be uh, near net zero construction, but if you look at that chart, this is actually one area that we're seeing a lot of incentives come in on, um, and it's great. It's a great little area. Um, again, 64th and Pecos, kind of not typically an area you associate with green, but they're building a lot of great products there. Um, and then as you look around Denver, we definitely have some different uh, builders that are close to, to that mark on the, on the 60s or, or upper 50s. Colorado Springs, uh, same thing. We have a lot of good builders down Colorado Springs. We're not quite um, as, 
as well in the HERS rating as we are in the Denver metro area. But even there, we have two, two builders uh, or two building areas that are close to uh, 50 on the scale. And then we have a few that just can pull down a little bit. And that's hopefully what the, the incentive will do is we'll pull them below 50. Grand Junction. Um, I'm not sure of the, who's building out to, to the east of Grand Junction, but their products already qualify. So if you're working, uh, if you're part of the Grand Junction Realtor Association and you have some clients that are out there, please uh, make sure that they know about the incentive. Um, as, as again, they can just pretty much just help buy down maybe their interest rate a little bit uh, or uh, just have a little bit more money in their pocket. So with that, um, let's look at the existing home program. So I said there was two different tracks and this is the reason why we separated it out is because it's, it's a little bit different. Um, it's, it's not complicated, uh, same thing. The more you save, the, the bigger your incentive will be. Uh, so and it works with any home in Colorado and any lender. So it should be pretty easy for you to work with on your home buyer. Um, they just have to find an existing home and tell the lender again that they're interested in the program. Um, the home buyer orders a HERS rating. So this is the only difference. Uh, whereas the builder was ordering the HERS rating, the home buyer has to order the HERS rating. So it can cost anywhere between three hundred to six hundred dollars. Um, so think of that as a home inspection type uh, fee. The good news is that can actually be leveraged as part of the non-state source match. Um, but then the homeowner or home buyer would review the report and select the improved measures that they want to do. The lender then reserves the funds, same, same thing, uh, based on the estimated savings. And I send a letter back and say, yes, this money's for your client. The homeowner, the only difference is that the homeowner signs the agreement at closing to say that they're going to do these improvements. Uh, the idea was that we didn't want the improvements done before closing because that would hold up the real estate transaction. What we did is, is when we worked with realtors, we, we heard over and over again, we're interested in energy efficiency. We're not against energy efficiency, but we want products that don't hold up the real estate transaction or really put our buyer in a bad position. When they're putting in an offer that says, um, we have mortgage approval and we're gonna provide uh, you know, this much down payment and we're gonna go through the inspection report, we don't want another piece of paper in a competitive market that says, oh, by the way, we might need another month to close on a house. So what we did is we worked um, to figure out how, this, how we can do this at time of closing. And basically, by having the homeowner agree to do the improvements after closing, we're still providing the money at closing, but they have to agree to do the improvements. Um, and we have to have some sort of, uh, not necessarily a contract, but some sort of way to say, you agreed to do this. Uh, the lender or real estate broker then invoices the energy office after closing. And you heard me right, um, sometimes realtors can, can provide the, um, the funds instead of the lender. We reimburse the lender or the realtor for that. And this is again because of the January 10th uh, mortgage rules. We started hitting percentages in some of our lower uh, cost mortgages. And so we, we've been working with realtors and brokerage firms to figure out ways um, to still get the money and get the improvement because the benefit still needs to go to your client uh, for that. The last step is again, the homeowner does the improvements after closing. Uh, they may have escrowed the funds or maybe they found a different way to pay for the improvements. So one way what we're gonna do on this is look, same thing with the new homes, we're gonna look at the different incentive tiers. Um, let's take a look at 10 to 20. This is really basic. This is doing air sealing, maybe adding a little insulation, they get a $2,000 benefit. Um, the home starts at 150 on the HERS scale. So even though I said, you know, once we get to some of our older homes in some of the mountain communities, um, we get to 170 or so on the scale. We're still going to cap that at 150, and so that's what your improvements are based off of. So if they get to 140, $2,000 benefit. Uh, that should pay for the HERS rating, and that should pay for uh, the actual improvements as well. But we want to encourage people to do more. So if you improve more than 66 points or you drop uh, down below 84, you're going to get a $6,000 benefit. Again, that might not pay for all the improvements, but it's gonna pay for a good amount of the improvements. Um, for all the tiers, there's a non-state source match of 0.5% of the mortgage balance that is lower than the existing homes. And the reason is that we don't have a builder partner in this transaction. It's really just the lender, realtor, and the state uh, that are working with the home buyer to make this happen. Uh, so how does that work? Well, let's look at a mortgage amount of $200,000 and a HERS reduction of 40. Uh, within this, uh, 0.5% of the of the cost would be or of the incentive excuse me sorry 0.5% of the mortgage amount is a thousand dollars but the incentive level is three thousand so the energy office is going to uh, provide three thousand dollars to that homeowner 
whether through the lender or through the realtor, uh, to make that $4,000 uh, tier so they can provide that, those improvements at their home. Um, and when we look at point of purchase, we call it point of purchase, maybe time of sale transactions retrofits. Um, what, we, what we did work on last year is with FHA and HUD on the incentive. So the example I'm going to go through in a little bit is going to be based on, on one of their programs. So the question that, we come, that comes up a lot is how, how does this happen? How do you, you know, you're going to provide this incentive, but it's not going to really pay for all of the improvements. How do we work on that? Well, let's just take a let's just take a broad let's take a step back. We're not getting into one mortgage product or another. Let's take a step back and look at the two different pathways that we typically have, whether it's a conventional mortgage or an FHA VA mortgage. Um, so, just think of a client. What's what's a client that you work with in the last week or the last month? The inspection called for heating equipment or hot water replacement. Uh, maybe you want to put them through this program. Maybe you're going to call it out on the uh, inspection report to to get it done. Um, make sure they do an Energy Star replacement. But before they put that furnace in, maybe let's take a look to make sure the insulation levels are adequate. And then we can downsize that furnace so they can save even more money. Um, not only just have a comfortable house, less maintenance costs, but even have uh, lower utility bills with adding insulation into that, into that building, into that home. Um, maybe the inspection doesn't call for replacement, but the homeowner wants to add solar, just add insulation. That's fine. If we want a conventional mortgage, we can't wrap the improvements up into the mortgage like we would an FHA or VA mortgage. But I just want people to be aware that around the state, there's the HUD Power Saver. They don't have to be doing an FHA loan to be doing a HUD Power Saver. There's the Energy Smart Loans in Denver, Boulder, Eagle, Pitkin, and Gunnison counties. Low interest loan products, I mean, starting out at uh, 2 to 3%. Fort Collins Utilities has on-bill financing. So they don't even have to take out another loan product, it just gets put onto their energy bill. Home RX loans down in Durango. There's all these really great products around the state. Um, that are available for, for homeowners to use or home buyers to use. So even though you can't wrap it up in the mortgage, uh, what I really just want to let you know, there's these other products that they can t add on uh, for energy improvements. And it's not a second mortgage, so they don't have to have equity in the home. So if they're doing an FHA and only put 3% or 3.5% down, or they just did a conventional with 5% down, they can still add on these other, other loan products and get the, get the benefit from energy reductions. Because what they're looking at is saying, the total cost of home ownership, if we add energy costs into principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, if we add energy, um, or if we add energy plus a small loan to reduce that energy cost, if we can work on that second part, we're going to probably put them in a, a home that they can afford more. Uh, FHA or VA mortgage, if you have a client that's doing an FHA or VA mortgage and they're not taking advantage of the energy efficient mortgage option uh, or the Colorado Energy Saving Mortgage Incentive, it's really, it's really a shame because they're really designed to go work hand in hand. And actually our first uh, incentive that we rolled out was with a VA mortgage. And, and it's a great product that really pushes uh, homeowners farther, especially on FHA. We're, we're talking about a, a group of home buyers that are just at the cusp of being able to afford a home. So if we can make their home more affordable by reducing their interest rates or, or maybe just reducing their energy bills, depending on how they use that incentive, um, we can really make an impact on their total cost of home ownership. So we talked a little bit about energy efficient mortgage and I sort of said, well, they changed it around a lot. So I just wanted to recap what it really is, just to make sure we're on the same page. Um, what it is, is a loan feature, not an actual product. It basically allows the homeowner or home buyer to add the cost of basically insulation, other energy improvements into the mortgage. It sits on top of the mortgage rather than um, being incorporated from the beginning. So you don't have to bring in more down payment. The insurance premiums aren't based off it. The insurance premiums and down payment are still based on the basic mortgage, and this just sits on top. So again, it's a feature, not an actual product. Um, again, you're going to see the HERS index rating. In order to qualify for the programs, in many cases, you're going to need a HERS index rating for FHA and VA. Um, my last note, though, is all FHA and VA loans can use the feature. Um, so if you are working with lenders, say, no, we don't offer that. Um, I work two streets down from HUD. And every day I can go down there and say, this lender won't do it. Can we find a lender that will do it? Um, and again, sort of build that market for, for your clients and put them in a better home. So on the FHA energy efficient mortgage, and I'm going to highlight them just again, because I work so closely with them here in Denver, uh, uh, reiterate that they help develop the incentive. Any FHA lender can offer the EEM, and I'm not joking. Um, if you have trouble with that, please let me know and I, I will work on that for you. Um, the great thing about this is no second appraisal is needed or additional down payment funds as we talked about. The nice thing about the second appraisal is while we have really studied 
PV solar, and we've shown there's a positive value for, for solar um, in real estate markets um, and the home transaction. We haven't quite figured that out on the energy efficiency side while we're working on it. Um, this is a great product until we figure that out or until we can show how to do that in the market that this product is a great one to use. Uh, the other nice thing is contractors and bids do not have to be in place prior to closing. Um, so what this means, again, we are not holding up closings. We're still putting your buyer in a good position to get that home, especially as we know homes are flying off the shelves here, in, uh, at least on the front range. I know some mountain communities are also sort of uh, uh, building momentum as well. The max on the E loan amount, uh, it's a lesser of three calculations. What I want to basically to say is the value times 0.5%. Or 7,800 for a home that's 156,000. That is probably the calculation. That 0.5% is that what you're going to use the most, simply because uh, if you're running uh, an FHA loan, uh, you're probably not going to hit 115% of the median area accounting for the price, or 150% of Freddie conforming's limit. There might be a few cases, but in general, value times 5% point or value times 5% is what you're going to what you can add to the mortgage. So again, it sits on top. So that homeowner could add $7,800 to their mortgage without having to requalify, without adding down payment to save, um, provide energy efficiency measure upgrades, or even maybe adding solar in the long run. So there's a reason why I picked 156,000. We're going to go over an example here. Um, this is actually uh, one of the homes that we used in the program. Um, it's uh, you can see on here. This is actually a, a screenshot on the left-hand side uh, from the HERS index report. You can see that their average total utility cost is about 2,900, um, as the house is at 170. But if they did all the improvements that were recommended or what they, they did decide to do, they would reduce that, that energy cost per year by uh, almost $1,100, down to about $1,800, um, and score about an 88 on the, on the HERS index scale. So if you remember, if you went back up to the slide that we, if you have your PowerPoint open, if you went up to the tier level, um, you know, 150, we're not going to take the 170, we're going to take that cap of 150 minus 88 is 62. Well, they qualified for a $5,000 incentive from the Colorado Energy Office. The nice part about this is that there was $1,000 in additional utility rebates on this home. Um, so while the improved cost would cost, the improvement cost would cost $11,000 to drop that HERS rating by 62, $6,000 of it is coming off at the top simply because of Colorado Energy Office and the utility rebates that are available. So using the energy efficient mortgage loan, you know, this is a $156,000 home. I said that they could add seven, up to 7,800. Well, they only had to add 5,000 into their mortgage. One way to think about this is in terms of monthly payments. To do all those improvements over the course of the loan, they had to add $26.84 per month or $322.08 uh, per year. So what does that mean? To save $1,100 a year, well, let's look at $322, about $800. That's pretty much a mortgage payment for, for this homeowner. So each year, instead of making 12 mortgage payments with the energy savings, they really only have to make 11. Um, they still have to make the 12th one, but in terms of, of, what, of how it looks to them. So just want to give a little bit better visual of this is the traditional calculation that we normally look at life, you know, the mortgage amount, 156, energy costs annually, $2,900, broken down in your monthly uh, $837 per month on your principal and interest payment, $243 on your uh, energy costs. All right, that's your monthly amount, uh, $1,080. On the energy saving mortgage calculation, again, this house was $156,000. Improvement costs, they were going to have to add $11,000, but the CEO credit, utility rebates, well, they only added to add $5,000. And there's their energy costs annually. Again, this is the, the example that we went over on the last page. When you look down monthly, you know they did have to add that $26 in there. They did have to add in the 100, but they reduced their energy cost by $148. So total per month, $1,012. So basically saving about $70 a month on from from where they were. And the nice thing about this is not only they're saving $70 a month, they have added capital improvements to their house uh, without having to increase their their monthly payments. Uh, they're going to be more comfortable in their house. The house is probably healthier because there's also testing that goes on with gas appliances, so their kids are in a better position to live in there. And it, it basically makes sense um, from a financial standpoint. And this is what we're trying to encourage. Um, you know, when we talked about earlier the mission of the office is to provide the ability of every Coloradoan to live in a healthy home or a high efficiency, high performing home. 
This is how we can do it on the existing home side. By leveraging this incentive, we can help put people, um, even people that uh, might not have a lot of capital to work with doing FHA loans, into really good homes um, or provide that provide that that pathway to make that home more efficient for them. So when we look at the whole scale of, of what we're doing, for that person in seven to eight years, when they go to sell that, now when they go to list it on the MLS, you know, 96% of the homes in Colorado are covered by a green MLS. They can list those features onto that MLS. And then by training the appraisers and by looking at doing the studies that we're doing, we can see if that has value in the end. And then they can get additional um, payback on, on that on those improvements. So it's really a holistic approach that we're trying to take within the real estate transaction is not just doing improvements, but seeing them all the way through to the end of having value in seven to eight years. So that is really the basic uh, portion of my presentation. I think we're going to take a break here shortly to go over some questions. But what I want to throw up on the screen before we uh, leave here or before we take a small break is my contact information. Um, if you have questions on anything, um, please feel free to email me or call me. Um, I'd be more than happy to uh, walk you through the incentive. Um, or if you have a lender that's unsure, get, get them on the phone with me. We can walk uh, the lender and also your client through the incentive. Um, and the idea is to make this as easy to use as possible. Um, if you have questions on the market trends as well, um, or some of the data, you can please, again, feel free to e email me, or the study is actually also available on our website, and you can see it there, colorado.gov forward slash energy. So with that, um, I think we'll take a small break for some questions. Anything else, Wes? No, I don't think so. That was a great job. You got through a lot of information in a short so, amount of time. So we, we do have quite a few questions that have come in. So let's take a three-minute break, and Peter and I will come back, and we'll run through some of these questions that have been submitted. We'll see you in just a few minutes. The first thing is the people. Obviously, this business is about the connections you make um, and the, the people you trust. And the most important people that I trust in this industry are at this company. The new beginning. Um, other companies have are doing things the same way they've always done them. And so having a new opportunity to do things a different way is what really intrigued me. Um, I'd say from a sales perspective, what I love most is that we have really the best of both worlds. So we're a big multi-billion dollar international company with great financials um, but on the other side we also feel very much like the small little family run company. I like the safety of First American um, but they've got a, a human side to them you know a little softer gentler approach and uh, I really appreciate that um, and they've really given me a great opportunity to go out and try and build something for them. In Colorado, guess what? We're all local. There's four local underwriters, and together, the other day, we have in almost 125 years of local underwriting experience in Colorado. And I tell that to people all the time, and that's really the big difference. We can make local decisions quickly to get that deal to the closing table. That's the big difference. We're, we're a team, and, and we support each other and look out for each other, and it really promotes more business for us. First American is all about a work-life balance, and the, the leadership is incredible because they truly care about the customers that, or the, the associates that work here. This is our customer service department, and the marketing support services that are just completely robust. Uh, marketing is a challenge for a lot of real estate brokers. It's something they have to do, but it takes a lot of time. It can be expensive, and we have a fulfillment solution that is far and away better than anything else that our competitors have to offer. The leadership is very down to earth and they move very quickly. So anytime I've needed something or had to support a customer or had to make a decision that maybe cost the company money or whatever, uh, they're very quick to make a decision on that stuff. You're working with people who have been in this market, in the Colorado market, for 30 plus years. At one point, um, First American was underwriting almost 70% of all transactions in Colorado, and some of those very people were working on those files. I really believe our people are passionate about our company and, um, and do it better.
All right, we're back. Thank you so much for your questions, and we had a few of them. So let's yes. just jump right in, Peter. Um, first of all, kind of at the beginning of the, the presentation, you talked about the PV solar study and that the study focused solely on owned systems, yes. the, the owned hardware. Has there been any discussion around leased systems or being able to study leased systems? I think that the, there is a concern in our industry that if the hardware is attached to the property, the new buyer who comes in yeah. may not yes. be uh, kind of in on the deal. So what are your thoughts on that? Or is yeah. there some empirical feed, feedback that at the office or at the agency that you've heard from stakeholders in the industry around that? Yeah. And, and certainly that, that is a very valid question. We hear a lot of, uh, of chatter, I guess, from all these complicated leases. How do we do it? From the study perspective, though, there's not enough data out in the market for us to, to look at it. We were able to isolate own systems because they were out there on the MLS on lease systems. What we're finding, um, it, the market basically just exploded over the last year. Um, so hopefully some data will come in. Uh, I don't have, I can't point to a site that says in Colorado, this is, this is what your premium in, or here's, here's, some, here's how it works. Uh, what I would say is that the Appraisal Institute, uh, they're kind of one of the education arms of uh, for appraisers, they just develop a course just solely on, on PV lease systems. So that should be coming into the Colorado market. Um, they're trying to catch up essentially on that. And, and do you all work closely with some of, I guess for lack of a better term, private industry, some of the providers out there, either providing the hardware and also some of the energy, well, not some, but the energy yeah. provider. Yeah. So, so with that, I mean, there's even though there's not a direct link right now to Home Valley, when we do work with them, I mean, what we, what we talk to them about is, you know, you really have to make sure um, that you are explaining this not only just to the client, but but when you have a realtor that's coming, when, they, when they're going to sell their house, that you let them know when you're putting the system on, when they go to sell the house, they need to get with you maybe a month beforehand and go over with the realtor uh, that, they've, that they've selected and the home buyer to talk about what the payments are and figure out a way maybe how to market this, the, the system. Um, because typically you are saving 20% even on a list lease system on your energy bills um, so it can still be a selling point um, but you just want to make sure that people don't think of it as a complicated issue that they right. can really take advantage of it right so so let's sh thank you for that let's shift gears for just a, a minute builders are obviously yeah. a key stakeholder yes. in this group how do you all work with the builder community how is that gone and and what are I guess some some traction or some steps being taken yeah. in, in order to continuing to to build, bridge that gap. Yeah, uh, there's a couple different ways we, we do reach uh, builders. The first way, uh, last year they were uh, part of the discussion on the bill, so uh, through the the Colorado HBA, we we're able to get information out to uh, different builders. The second way uh, that we really do work with builders is actually through lenders on this program. With that, um, instead of the energy office coming say, hey, if you have this energy package here you know this home buyer can have this incentive it's actually coming from the preferred lenders so right. say um, you know when our homes has a preferred lender their preferred lender is taking that information to them and saying hey these buyers can qualify on, on it here's how it works within the HUD one here's how it works within your financial package um, and it's a little bit more of a detailed oriented approach sure well it's kind of a business to business conversation or a partnership at that point certainly and that, that's really what it's all about leveraging existing relationships and partnerships where we don't have to kind of come in there that there's that natural um, working partnership that they already have right well and the builder can use that almost say if they're gonna be putting three thousand dollars down for closing anyway we're just pulling numbers out of the air yeah. those are dollars that could be used for energy efficiency upgrades or incentive programs or whatever the case may be uh, that make it more attractive or a selling point for potentially some of the clients or the potential buyers. Exactly. Uh, so, so let's jump into the mortgage incentive programs. Yes. And, and we'll talk from 10,000 feet, and then we'll get into, based on some of the questions we had, some in, into the new home and also the existing home yep. programs. Uh, first of all, are these grants or loans? No, I'm, I'm sorry. I kind of forgot to uh, mention that. I, I know I provide a lot of information out there, so I'm sorry this is one basic question. Um, they are actually grants. It's not a repayable loan. It is money that once it goes out there, it is for the client. We're not going to ask for it back. It is um, there to, to as a grant. And then realtors or, or the licensed brokers, do they have to sign 
uh, a contract of any kind throughout the process? Yeah, nope. This is really um, essentially all we're really asking from the realtor uh, point of view, realtor's point of view, is just to pass information along to their to their client. Uh, even on the lender side, there's no um, there's no contract they sign with us. They just sign in a reservation form. There's no disclosures. It's uh, really a straightforward process that we're uh, working from. The idea from the energy office standpoint was how do we make this as simple and easy to use? Uh, real estate deals over the last, and it's probably even longer than this, over the last 20 years have gotten more and more complicated. Um, while we're adding something into this, how do we make it easier for realtors and lenders to use? So no disclosures, um, no contracts to sign, just passing information along. Got it. Um, what, what if the property of the transaction has already been closed? Are there incentives available at that point? Uh, unfortunately, if I know there's been a lot of real estate sales this year already. Uh, if the home is closed already, um, we can't actually fund the improvements. What we did, um, it has to run on the HUD-1, the energy office. I think I mentioned this in, in the presentation. If I, did, I'm, if I didn't, I'm sorry. We're not a regulatory agency. We don't have the ability to um, regulate mortgages or, or real estate transactions. So if it doesn't go on the HUD-1, um, we don't. We need that that third party really to make sure that it's legal and right. it's okay. So that's our protection. Right. Got it. Let, let's dive into the new home mortgage incentive. Uh, first of all, are there instances where? So to clarify, then the um, the home buyer, the potential yeah. buyer, provides an estimated index score or her score. Yeah. Uh, and that will qualify for them for the tiered in incentive. Um, are, are there instances where that estimate might differ from what the builder will come back with or what that final rating ends yes. up being? Um, no, that, that has happened. That's a really good question. Uh, so what we do in that case, um, you know, that home, maybe they went under contract today and they reserved the incentive for $8,000, um, but that home isn't gonna be built or occupied until September, and that's when they close on the house. Um, and at that point, maybe it drops to a $2,500 incentive. That's okay. Really all the reservation does is hold the money in place for them. So that way we can kind of get an estimate of what, what, where the program is spending money. At the closing, about five days before closing, that builder will provide a HERS rating uh, for that client. And then we'll adjust the incentive off of that. And that's one reason why we keep the incentive on a fees worksheet, not on a good faith estimate. Um, if it's on a good faith estimate, we run into a whole lots of mm -hmm. problems that could push back closing as they recalculate things right. on a fees worksheet. We can adjust it. Um, the kind of a, a secret behind that, if, if they put in the $8,000 incentive and they drop down, hopefully they'll, they'll uh, want to keep on going to that, to that $8,000 level. That'll be a carrot out there for them to maybe add some PV solar or something like that or extra insulation. Um, but if it doesn't match up, that's okay. Um, the lender was will correct the problem on, on the end, and that's what we'll pay the incentive out on. And, and to be clear, you work with the lender directly correct? versus the, the broker doesn't have to be yeah. involved in, in, in the whole process, but they can be. They, they can be. They can be if they want to be. Um, it's really a, it's really the level of involvement the, the broker or realtor wants. Um, from just providing information, that's fine. If they want to be an advocate with their, with their uh, client and with the lender, more than happy. I, I join on lots of calls with both the lender and the realtor. Because um, in a lot of cases, what we find is what a lender finds that works for one client, but they have maybe five or six other clients that the incentive could work for. Right. So right. it's really up to them. So, so uh, how long does the incentive reimbursement take from the CEO office, and how does that process yeah. work? So the process is uh, very simply, and uh, it's a uh, Basically, the lender is, is fronting the money for the energy office for the state portion. At closing, um, they put it on the HUD-1 for the energy office, and then that day they invoice us. Um, we can't wire funds. We're not sophisticated like that. Um, but it, it, we're still we're, we're working on it. We're working on it. But sophisticated it's, setup. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, <laughs> setup. I'll go with setup. That yeah, might play a little better. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully no one else sees that. And, but um, when we look at, the, look at it that way, uh, within 30 days, we have to reimburse the lender. Uh, the, the nice thing about that is that the realtor doesn't have to be involved in that. It's really on the homeowner and the builder providing on the new home side that right. information to the lender and the lender providing it to us. So it's, it's a pretty, um, once we do the first transaction with the new lender, it's, after that it's pretty smooth. So getting that first one takes a lot of work. So uh, we're very open with 
being open for phone calls, emails, or walking people through. Got it. So builders are obviously, we, we talked about this, are a, yeah. are a key stakeholder in this, and and they're pitching in as well. Yeah. Are, are there a lot of builders participating in certain areas of the state? Are there some areas of the state where uh, there is still some education work to be done? Keeping in mind this is, this yeah. is a, a relatively new program. Yeah. Um, and what's the best way for our folks to go about finding out who is or who isn't? And on the it's, lending side as well. Okay. On the lending side, um, we work with the Colorado Mortgage Lenders Association um, to get the word out and the Colorado Bankers Association to, to our lenders. And I kind of mentioned before, they're sort of being our, um, you know, they're taking the program to the builders in a lot of cases. For a list of builders, um, my email address uh, was in the presentation. Email me, I have a list of 21 builders that qualify at the $8,000 level or have products that qualify at that level. And then we add more every day. I would say um, if you're in Colorado Springs, we actually have hired a consultant down there to do eight trainings, uh, working directly with builders on our behalf, um, really trying to get the incentive out there. We were lucky that when we developed the incentive, um, we had a lot of great participation from builders in the Denver metro area. Um, which is great because they know about the program. So if you go up to uh, Stapleton or, or up to kind of Adams County, we have a lot of good builders there. But, you know, Colorado's a big state. So that's why we hired someone in Colorado Springs. We actually have a lender that's going to be putting on 10 trainings as well to uh, realtors or builders. And then we've hired a consultant to do the Western Slope as well to do that, uh, that interaction. If you have questions on when these presentations are, um, please let me know. Um, email me. They're also actually, in many cases, we've tied two hours of continuing education credit to them. Um, that way there's an extra added benefit uh, oh, for awesome. the realtor. Yeah. Very good. And it's a state level class, so we don't charge anything. Awesome. So one of the takeaways here is that if any of you have questions, yeah. uh, I'm throwing you out here, but <laughs> if any of you all have questions about resources or the who, what, where to find, contact Peter, yeah. uh, which is why he's here today and we appreciate your outreach. Um, let, let's move to the existing home mortgage incentive. To clarify, the the um, the improvements don't have to be completed mm -hmm. before or at closing. Correct. Um, what do the potential home buyers need to provide in order to get in, approved for okay. The incentive. Yeah, it, the initial reservation is pretty simple. Um, sometime maybe when they're doing their home inspection or, or before or after, they get a HERS index report, and with that they select their improvements. And uh, when they select those improvements, that sort of they give that to the lender. The lender provides that to us. I know it's sort of a lot of steps in there, but basically just get a HERS index report, select your improvements, and we'll set the incentive. After that. Um, the only other piece of information or thing that they have to do is sign the homeowner agreement at the time of sale. Um, so at closing, um, whether it's the title company or the lent or the realtor will provide, it's basically a one-page document that lists, we're going to add insulation, we're going to add um, maybe a new furnace, and these are the improvements that we said we're going to reduce our score by this amount. Right. And they just sign an agreement that they're going to do it within 120 days. What we find in a lot of cases, um, if the money's been escrowed in the title company, that those improvements are done that next Monday uh, when they're moving in. It's that fast in some cases. In other cases, it takes a little bit of time to get those improvements done. On on that end, um, since we're working with the homeowner and working with uh, with them directly on the homeowner agreement, the realtor and the lender are sort of out out of the picture at that point. Um, we're just going to encourage the, the that home buyer. Okay, here are the different steps that you need to take and, and just check in on them on 120 days to be like, were the improvements completed? And if not, um, then we just have a discussion. Okay, how do we, how do we get this scheduled up? What can, how can we make this happen for you? And I think we saw in the, in the presentation there's a lot of other products out there uh, that can help them uh, finance if, if they need to, if they get to that point. Sure. So have there been any instances where th that new homeowner decide to spend that investment on a say a drafty new bathroom instead of yeah energy improvements there, I, 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 that was a good question that wasn't a yeah no <laughs> the answer is no no one no one yeah. has ever i mean this program is actually a pilot program through wells fargo and bank of colorado uh, for three years and in that time and in the time that we've had it no one has uh, never not done the improvements i know that's a possibility i mean they do sign the homeowner agreement and we do check in at 120 days but uh, the reality is, is 
uh, a lot of these improvements are done right away. Right. And when people understand the financial, uh, that last slide, that they're saving $70 a month, it's sort of, right. they, um, they usually just end up doing it. Right. Well, and that's yeah. the whole purpose of going through the process in the first place. And it is yeah. a process. But, you know, I think important takeaway there, too, is that the energy office has a vested stake in this process mm -hmm. and, and what the improvements are, are ultimately going to lead to and that the office does work yeah. with the homeowners and that they follow up with the homeowners yeah. and, and to ensure that, that they're being used for the purposes and ultimately, right, how uh, how effective that they're gonna be. Correct. Um, do you see a lot of investors, I guess, and again, backing up 10,000 feet, and I guess it's a little bit well, more pointed toward the existing home. Yeah. Um, do you see a lot of investors taking advantage of the program? Is there, there some outreach in that area? Uh, we haven't seen a lot of. We haven't seen them take advantage of it yet. Um, however, we uh, we have seen some outreach in that we've been getting questions from uh, definitely lenders that have been using, um, or definitely investors that have been using different realtors to find properties. So that's actually the best scenario is to have an investor that buys it. Uh, the only issue is that the credit can only be used once on a house, so if that investor turned it into a net zero home, there's not another credit that can be put onto that home. You can only get one credit per house. But the idea for us is if we get an investor to, to do it, then all of a sudden they're going to list that on the MLS, and then if you go back up to our early part of the presentation and sort of the green MLS and seeing those trends, well, we only have 2% of homes, existing homes that have been marketed as energy efficient. Right. That will help fill in the gap. Uh, which would be nice. I will say um, the one issue that we do have as well with investors is um, it has to be used on a, a HUD-1 and a lot of investors that we run in are either all cash buyers right. or using hard money and unfortunately um, the way the program was designed it has to go through a lender. I see. Yeah. I see. Interesting. Yeah. So you mentioned that um, and I guess just for clarification purposes, that the incentive can only be used once yes. per property. Is that per owner per property or just per property in perpetuity? Uh, the way it's set up right The now. way it's set up right now. I don't know if there's going to be changes in the program, but as of today, um, the way the legislation was passed is that it's one um, one incentive per home. Um, so if if I bought a house, and or say you bought a house and you were an investor, and you, spent, you received a $6,000 incentive, um, and when I went to go buy it, and they say it was a net zero home, I, I can't get an incentive um, on that because it's, it's address based. I see. But if you are an investor, if you're a home buyer, you could take advantage, maybe you bought three or four homes, you can apply for three or four. There's not a cap on an individual, it's all based on the unit or the dwelling. Got it. So what can our people do to help spread the message, spread the word? and get information out there about the incentive programs that are available? Uh, there's a few things that we can do. Um, one, uh, we're working on a, a brochure that, that talks about the, the incentive or, or a two-pager. Um, we're looking to have that uh, on our website so uh, they can they can do um, download that and, and print that up. Uh, one thing that we've talked about, maybe this probably for further discussion, is um, if there's enough people, if you email me, if there's a uh, a need for this, uh, you know, on a brochure or something, if you want to co-market on something, if you want to put your logo on there, we, we could do that, if you think that would help. Um, but basically, uh, just providing that information just to hand out to, to your clients um, and letting them know that even if it's a home built in 2000, it probably needs insulation in Colorado. That's sort of where we are. If, you, if a home built after 2003, program doesn't quite apply, um, unless they want to do solar, but any house before 2003, if they have a, a client especially on an existing home, let them know. On the new home side, I understand it could be difficult. You don't sure. know if that builder will have that product. Right. But on an existing home, this is, I mean, it's its pretty well set up for, on almost any existing home in Colorado. It's, and I think one of the takeaways you hear too, and we've talked about the fact that there's a lot of information yeah. on the state on the state level, yeah. on the federal level, in some pockets on the local level. I, I think one of the one of the things that our folks, yeah. uh, what's effective is, is to just ask the, their client or, yeah. or, or the, the buyer, are you interested in pursuing some energy upgrades? There, yeah. there are some programs available that are mortgage-based incentives. Yeah. Uh, and if so, let me 
If so, let me find some more information yeah. uh, for you or connect them directly with you. Is that fair to say? Yeah. No, we've had homeowners call us directly or home buyers um, to get more information. And that is that is fine. I, I mean, I, we did throw my you know email and, and phone number up there for a reason. Right. Uh, when it comes to local communities, um, the one thing that we might do um, is also provide local resources. You know, there's a lot of great organizations out there. You know, I'm thinking I can't come out to Gunnison, right. for example, but right. there's a great organization uh, down there called OR that they might not know 100% of information about the mortgage incentive, but they know who to, where to find a rater for you, um, where to uh, leverage other utility rebates and walk you through the process. So right. uh, one thing that we can do with realtors is also point them to local resources that can be even more impactful for their client. Got it, got it. So. Well, so that's the takeaway. When in doubt, yeah. call Peter. <laughs> Pretty much at this point. we. <laughs> I'm sure you'll talk with me later. Yeah. Um, well, sounds good. I really appreciate oh, thank you very your much time for this morning me. and your expertise and, and the support that, that you've provided the association. Thank you all for joining us as well. If we didn't get to your question or if one of may have slipped through on us, uh, feel free to send that there through the system or email it to the address there on your screen and we'll turn around and try to get that answered for you. We'll consult with Peter directly as quickly as possible. Uh, just a reminder, we have a full legislative review here in just a couple of weeks. Two weeks from today at 9 a.m. You can register for that at coloradorealtors.com under the Professional Development tab. Or another good way of following the webcast program if you aren't already is to click the green follow button there on your screen and you'll receive automatic updates when we schedule our broadcasts and also the recordings afterward. So that's it from here. Thanks so much, take care, and have a great day. What if there was no car legal hotline? Just one call to a lawyer would cost you at least $250 per hour. What if? You only had unreliable or hard to understand industry reports to include in your business plans and share with your consumers. What if there was not an organized association to fight for your right to conduct business in a fair and equitable manner and to protect consumers' private property rights? What if CAR never changes with the times to meet our members' needs? You don't have to ask what if anymore. Because over the last 18 months, CAR expanded the legal hotline two more hours a week to help answer your legal questions. CAR created a research program that provides Colorado Realtors with accurate and reliable quarterly housing market reports. CAR successfully advocates on Capitol Hill each year on behalf of all Colorado Realtors and private property owners so you can focus on your business. CAR created a professional development program that focuses on timely and relevant real estate issues through our live webcast program. CAR established relationships with many real estate related companies to give you member discounts on things you actually use and need to be successful. CAR produced phenomenal networking and professional development opportunities in 2013 through its meetings and events. CAR's quest to make your state association better, stronger, more relevant, and able to withstand future challenges of the real estate industry is a never-ending journey. We have successfully put many solid processes, programs, and services in place. Now it's time to take the next steps of our journey by adding more value to your membership. Our vision is to create more opportunities for Colorado Realtors to lower their risk by expanding the hours of the CAR Legal Hotline. Provide more reliable industry and consumer data to make you more confident and productive in the sales process. Produce even more live webcasts you can apply to your ever-changing business and help you remain on top of your game. Build a deeper political war chest to help preserve the industry and protect your consumers' rights. 
increase our outreach to our local Realtor associations, MLSs, and members. Take advantage of your car benefits and features. Visit coloradorealtors.com for details.